In this video, I'm going to show you how to SSH into your Remarkable using Windows. In order to do that, you first of all need an SSH client. I recommend a program called PuTTY. To download that, just Google PuTTY and click on the first link, which is putty.org. Then there's a section Download PuTTY, so just click here. And then you can either download a package with multiple binaries, but we basically just need this one, putty.exe. So just click on the one according to the architecture of your operating system. I have already downloaded it, there's no need to install it, just execute the file. And now it asks you for a host name or IP address. So we need to find out the IP address of Remarkable. How do we do that? We click the RM logo in the top left and then click on About. And in the very bottom of the right column where the text is, we can see either one or two IP addresses. There's one starting with 10.11. This is the IP address for the USB interface. So if you connect it with the USB cable, you can use the one starting with 10. And if you connect it to Wi-Fi, there's another one. In my case, it starts with 192.168. That's the one you can use via Wi-Fi. So just type in that address. In my case, 192.168. One seven eight three two, and hit open. You will then be prompted for a username for login name. That is root in our case, R O O T. Hit enter, and then you need a password. The password you find on the same page, so on the about page, just a bit above that, it says password. So just type in that password, and hit enter again. And now you're logged in to the remarkable. Always having to type your password is quite time consuming and you have to remember it. So you might look for a way to get rid of that. And there is actually a way you can generate a so-called SSH key and use that to identify instead of your password. In order to generate such a key, um, remember the website where you downloaded PuTTY, where you have the binary files. Just uh, scroll down till you find puttygen.exe and download the according file to your system architecture. I have mine here. Just double click that again and click generate. Now you have to move your mouse over that blank area in order to generate some randomness. And there is your public key. Now you need to save two keys, a public key and a private key. So just hit save public key here and give it a name. They're usually called ID rsa.public on Linux, so I'm going to use that name. And save your private key. It will ask you, are you sure that you don't want to protect it with a password? But we are generating that key because we don't want to input a password all the time. So if you actually set a password for that key, you would have to input the password for the key all the time. So because we don't want to do that, we just hit yes. And this one then is usually called ID RSA, so oops, RSA, so without the public. You can see this comes out as ID underscore RSA dot PPK. Now this text inside this text field here is the actual contents of our public key. We want to transfer that to our Remarkable, so we just copy that and open PuTTY again, enter our address, and if you're still watching, I'm assuming you like efficiency. So I'm going to show you how to avoid typing this IP all the time. So just on the saved sessions, just give it a name, for example, RM for Remarkable, hit save. And now this is in your sessions and you can just double click it in order to connect to Remarkable. So just say you want to log in as root and you need to give your password one more time and you're in here. Now, we're looking for a folder called .ssh. So we first of all have to make sure this folder exists. So in order to check that, let's try changing into this folder. So type cd space dot ssh. If everything's okay, then you should just be in that folder. If you get something like no such file or directory, then this folder does not exist. In this case, just type mkdir make directory space dot ssh and then the cd dot ssh from above. Now we need to 
paste the contents of that public key into a certain file. So to do that, type echo and then right click. Right clicking basically means paste the contents of the clipboard and then type two greater than signs and then authorized underscore keys. So authorized with a Z underscore keys and hit enter. Now that the public key is inside this file authorized keys, the marker will announce who you are. And now you just need to set up Putty so that it uses your private key. So in Putty, just click on SSH, click on the plus to the left of SSH, then click on auth, A-U-T-H. And then here where it says private key for authentication, click browse, select your private key, click open. Okay, now after you have selected that key, go to your session again, choose the RM session, load it, and select RM, hit save again, just so we don't need to import that key all the time. And then just hit open, and you can type in root, and you're authenticated with that key without you having to input your password. Now, if you want to connect again, just double click putty, double click RM, input root, and you're good to go.